Hey guys, I'm Adrian from Adoriani.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the buffer size in Pro Tools. One of the biggest problems I had when I began learning Pro Tools was not understanding the hardware buffer size section. This option is located in the setup menu under playback engine right here. Why is this so important? The problem I had when I began recording my first vocal tracks was that I was hearing the vocals with delays, I mean latency. Neither I nor the vocalist could work in such conditions. Therefore I thought that there should be a solution to this. And it was under my nose. Basically, there is only one important rule of using the hardware buffer size. The lower the size, the better for recording tasks. The higher the size, the better for processing audio in your session. In other words, if you want to do some recordings, set the hardware buffer size as low as possible. I say as low as possible because this depends also on the power of your computer. There are computers that let you go as low as 32 samples and that lets you record with virtually no latency. However, if you're experiencing clicks and pops during recording at a low buffer size, try increasing it. The main issue here is the power of your computer. So, for recording, you should set the hardware buffer size as low as possible. On the other hand, when your session is fully loaded with plugins and tracks and you need the computer resources into processing your session, you should go to the highest value, allowing Pro Tools to take as much power as needed for your session. Another scenario that I usually have is that sometimes I experience different errors with Pro Tools, mentioning that I should increase the buffer size. After doing this, usually things go smoother. That's it guys, for recording, low buffer size, for processing, high buffer size. Tell us, how do you use the buffer size in your workflow? Hit the subscribe and like buttons, and say hello to us on our Facebook page. Until next time, stay cool and make great music.